everybody, welcome to Stonks Music. My name's Ollie, and today we're going to be having a look at Dynamic Tube in this deep dive episode. Let's go! Here we are in the Ableton manual. Let's see what they have to say about it. The Dynamic Tube effect infuses sounds with the peculiarities of tube saturation. An integrated envelope follower generates dynamic tonal variations related to the level of the input signal. The three tube models, A, B and C, provide a range of distortion characteristics known from real amplifier tubes. Tube A does not produce distortions if bias is set to low, but will kick in whenever the input signal exceeds a certain threshold creating bright harmonics. Tube C is a very poor tube amp that produces distortion all the time. The qualities of tube B lie somewhere between these two extremes. The tone control sets the spectral distribution of the distortions, directing them into the higher registers or through the mid-range and deeper. The drive control determines how much signal reaches the tube, Greater drive yields a dirtier output. The intensity of the tube is controlled by the bias dial, which pushes the signal into the celebrated realms of non-linear distortion. With very high amounts of bias, the signal will readily start to break apart. The bias parameter can be positively or negatively modulated by an envelope follower, which is controlled with the envelope knob. The more deeply the envelope is applied, the more the bias point will be influenced by the level of the input signal. Negative envelope values create expansion effects by reducing distortion on loud signals, while positive values will make loud sounds dirtier. Attack and release are envelope characteristics that define how quickly the envelope reacts to volume changes in the input signal. Together they shape the dynamic nature of the distortions. Note that if envelope is set to zero, they will have no effect cut or boost the device's final signal level with the output dial. Aliasing can be reduced by enabling high quality mode, which can be accessed via the right click PC, control click Mac context menu. This improves the sound quality, particularly with high frequency signals, but there is a slight increase in CPU usage. So it's quite a quick little effect here. Let's jump into Ableton. I'll run a couple of tests and we'll see what we can do. Right, so let's have a little look at our test results. Um, and I must say, I've never used this plugin before. It seems completely redundant to me. And running these tests, it kind of proves why. For my kind of insane, subtle as a brick through a window type of producing, this just doesn't do enough for me. Um, but nevertheless, let's have a look. So I started with my sub bass sound, which is just do, 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 here. Nice sub with a with an overtone. And first of all, I put it through A with the drive right up. So let's have a quick look. It's given us a bit of dirt here and slightly increased some overtones there a little bit. With the tone knob up, it's given us something a bit more sizable. It's added some of these uh, higher frequencies. It's added some more spiky bits. That's something we could work with that's quite nice. Compared to our original, that's a good bit of overtones that have been added there. Uh, B, just on, just on B, no, no drive or anything. And you can see something kind of poking up there, just about wants to, but really not much. And B, drive right up. There's a couple of little overtones being added. That's quite nice from the original. We see, and B with drive and the tone right up we can see some some harmonics being added. I mean, for me, this isn't really where I want the harmonics added. I want them higher up here. Um, but you know, it is what it is. And C, which is meant to be the real dirty one, I'm not really seeing much from it. So this is C with the drive whacked right up. I mean, okay, yeah, it is definitely adding a couple of higher frequencies, but not massively. And with the tone knob and the drive right the way up, there's a couple of things there. So this is a very subtle effect. It is emulating a tube distortion, so like an old tube amp, and the kind of way that when the tubes get hotter, that's when it's going to be um, adding these extra frequencies. 
So it used to be like back, way back when, you'd have to warm your amps up to get that nice crispy tone. Um, it's definitely very subtle. That tone A with the drive up and the tone right up is the most frequencies I can see added. So let's jump into Ableton and see if we can find any uses for it. Right, so I'm back in Ableton. What would I do with Dynamic Tube? Well, I did see it added a bit of character, so it would probably be good if you had a finished tune and you wanted to kind of spice some things up a bit. So let me grab some samples I've got already and we'll have a quick mess around and see if there's any use for it. So let's get a big distorted bass here. Have a listen. It's a big moving distorted bass. Let's get my dynamic tube on there. Um, set it to A and then we'll just bring these up and see what we can see. Okay, so that's quite interesting. With the bias all the way up, that's getting some real kind of broken, glitchy stuff. Now that's something that I would actually probably use quite a bit. Let's have a quick look in span and see what it's actually doing here. There we go. Whoa, hey. Right, so, come here and let me loop this. Compared to our original sound. So that is something that I could probably actually use as a transitional effect. Kind of the same way of crushing something into a bit crusher. That's quite a nice way to uh, totally destroy something. So I changed my tone quite quickly there from saying this is useless to actually with this bias control, quite useful. Let's go over to C. So I wouldn't necessarily call it a nice sound, but that's got some real crunchy stuff at the top. Now on its own, that's probably not too useful, but like most things in Ableton, we have the dry wet over here. So this is one that I would potentially automate over a bar so we could kind of break our sound down. So we'd have. Or in reverse, if we've got a build up and we start introducing our bass line, we could bring that down. So we could start off up here. So it's the same way you'd use an auto filter or something to kind of introduce a sound or take a sound away. We can kind of do that with the dynamic tube in a more glitchy kind of fashion. Um, the envelope and the attack and the release, I personally don't find them too useful ever. Um, if I'm gonna use the dynamic tube, this is what I would use it for, if, if anything. I find if you're looking for overtones, you'll get a much better job out of overdrive or saturator or any third-party plugin um, that is built for distortion. This is quite a uh, redundant effect, I think, in Ableton's arsenal, but why bother deleting it if they've already made it? Might as well leave it in there. Um, so we just have a little listen between A, B and C, and, and with the bias right up, so with it off. That just sounds like a total broken mess, but that's quite interesting to me. I like these little poppy clicky things. Um, and we could take the bias down a little bit if you don't want quite so broken. Or it might even be something you want to chuck a Max for Live device on. If we go audio effect, LFO, map to the dry wet, and let's have a little listen. And then there's a bit too much high-end 
crackle on there. We could get rid of that with a auto filter afterwards and just get rid of some of that higher. So it does have it does have its uses. It does have a definite sound to it. The other thing that you might want to use this for is like a channel EQ um, or a channel strip. If you had a few different sounds and you just wanted to slightly beef them up a bit, I think the dynamic tube would be a nice way to kind of subtly add some um, some rasp and some character. It definitely does have character, albeit subtle. We saw from our test results that you know with the tone right the way up, it does add extra frequencies it is adding overtones it's just quite a subtle one let me see if I can grab a sample of some guitar or something so let me grab this picking guitar line I'll turn warp mode off it's just kind of an airy little picky line from some project I was working on So you can hear all the reverb, all the delay, everything's been uh, bounced down into that. So if you're imagining trying to emulate running this through uh, some analog equipment, this is where Dynamic Tube might come in. So let's just... So the difference between the two is very subtle. I don't even know if we'd be able to see a difference on span. Let's have a listen with it off. Make you a bit bigger. I mean, I can't even really hear or see much of a difference. I can hear kind of a slight crackle coming through. So that might be a nice way, once you put it on multiple tracks, kind of, it, it does have its own character. It might add a little bit to it. Um, really, I think Dynamic Tube, it's a bit of a thing of the past. It's a bit of a moot discussion. Um, I might be totally wrong though, so do let me know. The only thing I found useful for it is with the bias up, you can get some glitchy noises. So, Dynamic Tube, glorified bit crusher. All right, everyone, thank you for tuning into this episode of Deep Dive. Dynamic Tube, eh, I think it's a bit of a legacy plugin that's been left over, really. I don't really see much point for it, apart from cranking that bias up, getting a few of those glitchy sounds. But hey, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below. As always, project files in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all of that good stuff. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.